The quality of the education system in the United States is falling behind in comparison to those in Asia and Europe. This is a serious issue that needs much attention and improvement. Hi, my name is Larry Adams and this is my argument on why the American school system is lacking. For this topic, I'll use one of the top ranking countries in the world for education as a comparison, which is the Republic of Korea. The statistics are staggering. In 2013, the U.S. Department of Education reported that an average of 78.2% of students in America graduate high school, whereas USA Today reported that 93% of Korean students graduate, which is notably the highest achievement in the world. According to a global report by education firm Pearson, the United States recently ranked 17th in the world for education. The U.S. was once renowned for its education, but has found it difficult in recent years to keep up with the rest of the world. But what is the underlying cause in our, in our inability to show significant improvement every year? Do we blame the teachers and their methods of instruction? Do we blame the students and their lack of caring and motivation, or their parents for their lack of involvement? According to another report by MetLife, Approximately 64% of parents are engaged with their child's school, which is a 24% improvement over the last 23 years. So maybe we blame the politicians and the decisions they make regarding education. Actually, the majority of the blame probably lies with the technological changes in our culture. After school is finished, students are too interested to go home and play World of Warcraft and other popular video games, getting on Facebook and Twitter, or participating in extracurricular sports and activities to worry about doing boring math and English homework. <clears throat> According to a recent article by a TAP service company, some schools are now even encouraging students to bring their smartphones, their laptops, and tablets to school. But the question is, will this fancy be beneficial to the students or be abused? In comparison, uh, Students in Korea do participate in some physical activities, but they rarely take a break from their studies. The emphasis placed on education in South Korea and other Asian countries is astounding. PBS.org actually had a breakdown of a typical South Korean student and American student student's school day, and these were their results. While both students may start off the day around the same time, the student in Korea actually spends approximately five to six more hours every day in a learning environment and usually don't end their day until between 11 p.m. and 1 a.m. in the morning just to start off in a few hours in the same fashion. The show also mentioned that of the 93% of high school graduates in Korea, USA Today also reports that the vast majority of them proceed on to college to put them on track to their careers that will feed into the country's impressive economic success. Now I have several ideas for improvement. First, I think students need more homework. Students that come home with little to no homework are not being academically challenged outside of the school environment, therefore allowing them too much leisure time. There's an old Korean proverb that probably explains why Koreans have such a strong drive for success. Kosen kuten nakionda. Now this roughly translates into hard work brings success. While Korean students may not be privileged with as much leisure time as American students, their hard work, and while they're young, pays off and brings them success when they are older. Now another problem that I think needs changing is that, parents, is that teachers should not teach the test just to ensure a better overall pass rate. All too many at times I have seen teachers practically teach the test giving foot stomps and hints of the questions and this does not accomplish anything. But what this does is weaken the demand for the student to demonstrate higher level learning. And this also applies for teachers that primarily utilize multiple choice questions and limiting the fill in the blank in essays. While multiple choice question tests may be easier and faster to grade, the short answer in the essay questions actually test the ability of the child and the students to, uh, to apply what they have learned. I believe that standardized tests are another negative driving factor on this issue. Standardized tests may be beneficial for the average and less than average students, but they negatively affect the above average students, and I say this because they are unable to reach their full potential because of the mediocrity of the test. Therefore, the goal of producing smarter and higher achieving young people cannot be reached. As a whole, we need to stop what's going on with our local education system and show that we need change. The best way to make a difference is to vote for educational reform. Parents need to ensure that their children understand the importance of getting their education 
and further challenging themselves, even if at the cost of less video game time and recreational time. Once we are able to make a change in our way of thinking and enforce the values of education, the U.S. will show a major improvement with education which will ultimately result in a major improvement with the national economy. If we don't make the necessary changes today, the children of tomorrow will suffer and pay the price. We need to take a look at our foreign counterparts and understand why our system is broken and why their system is wor works. To have a better effect on the children's education, parents can also vote on the Board of Education and join the Parent Teacher Association at their child's school. Overall, though, parents need to make sure their voices are heard. Thank you.